Uh, on MPI, I'm brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit this week. It is pick. Pick. Switching the smart way. What yes. is INFP this week? Okay, this week. This is a new company we're featuring. Pick. Uh, it's a German company. And they make read relay switches and sensors and more. And we're going to be talking about their uh, uh, read sensor chains, um, which I was like, what is that? Um, and when I actually got the board, I ordered one. And it's kind of a cool idea. And it's designed for liquid level sensing, but it could be used for other stuff as well. So the one cool thing I want to show off first is uh, they've got great graphics treatment. I mean, like, look at this amazing logo that they've got on the front of their catalog. Um, there's like a head and like a light bulb and inside is a read switch. Uh, so cool. But they also do Hall effect sensors and magnets and other magnetic sensors. So their main product is uh, read switches. So this is what a read switch looks like if you've never seen one. Um, it doesn't literally have a read in it, but the metal inside looks like a reed, you know, the kind that you'd have in a uh, um, like a woodwind instrument. It's a thin, flat sheet of metal. And when you put a, a magnet nearby, the two um, uh, reeds touch together and close the switch. And it's encased in this glass um, bubble with the two metal contacts. Um, these are extremely common. They're used in like everything um, for uh, you know, detecting when something is touching something or a float sensor. Um, we have like these door switch sensors, you know, when they detect when a window or door is opened. Um, those have a read sensor inside of a plastic casing for protection. So you have to watch out for the, the glass bubble. You don't want it to crack. Um, they have a very long lifetime. They're very inexpensive and they're very reliable. And you know, one of the nice things about them, which we'll talk later, is they can work at very high voltages and fairly high currents. Um, so fluid level sensing is a common engineering challenge um, for automation or industrial usage you have um you know a bucket or a, a vat of some fluid and you need to know when you're about to run out of fluid or when the fluid maybe gets too high and you have to vent it out or stop the process refill it um very very common so you, there's a couple different ways uh to do that um i'll just talk about a couple you know ways and why this the read chain is different so one is using like one of these e-tapes uh sensors that you know we stock and for this sensor it's got um, like a conductive fluid in it and as the water in you know you put you put the sensor inside the fluid and as it rises it squeezes on the envelope and it changes the resistivity and you can measure that resistivity and it's you know continuous which is quite nice uh you can measure how high the fluid is whereas most float sensors just tell you like when it's hit a certain point or not like it's a very it's a single point sensor this is a continuous sensor but it has to be inside the vat and of course you know, the e-tapes have to come in a certain length if they don't come in the length you want you can't increase the size and you can't cut them down um, but most importantly it has to sit in the fluid another option is you can use like sonar sensors and you're bouncing um sound waves over it but then you know the yeah, you know, this is exposed to whatever the fluid is. It could be hard to sterilize. Uh, it could get really dirty because it could, you know, it could possibly come in contact with splashes of fluid. Um, and so, you know, sonar is used for a lot of things, but maybe that's also not, you know, a, a perfect usage. Also, it, there's a cone and, you know, you have to make sure that the cone of the sonar doesn't hit the side of the vat. Another one is a time of flight sensor that's, um, also, you know, fairly common. Um, a more recent type um, doesn't have as much depth. Um, you, know, I think these go up to like maybe four meters. Maybe that's long enough. You have to have the light um, be visible. They can be a little bit flaky. Reflections, you know, and um, light dispersal on the liquid can affect it. And if the material is caustic, you have to protect this. And it's, you know, there's you have to get the I squared C data out, and it's a little bit more complicated. Um, and so having level sensors using uh, read switches is like an ancient. It's it's reliable and it's known and it's well understood. You have you know you see in the center there a single read and then the magnet is um, goes around it and everything can be coated in whatever material you want. It can be totally hermetically sealed because the you know as long as it's not metal, um, the magnet magnetic field can reach through um, the plastic material. So this is like you know from a video that they have of a single read that just it's a, again a single point it just tells you is the water above or below and you know this cup of water as it fills in 
um, the magnet rises or, or lowers, and as it gets close to the center of the reed switch, it closes, and then you just detect um, the closure of uh, the reed switch. When you have a single reed, though, you don't know whether the you know, you don't know what the level is. You just know whether it hit a certain point. So it could be above or below, which is a little bit risky. If you happen to somehow miss the, um, as it rises or lowers, you won't get another notification. You know, like the switch is either closes or opens. Uh, sorry, only closes when that magnet is right next to it. Uh, so to solve this, and also if you want to have continuous measurement, they're like, well, why have one read when you can have multiple? So this is a read chain. Uh, and that's the board that we're talking about. And basically, it's dozens of these reed switches, side by side, diagonal, so it's nice and slim. And each one connects, you can kind of see at the bottom, I'll show them the overhead um, in a bit. There is a 1K resistor, and as each one closes, it's going to short the chain against that resistor. So if the water's at the very bottom, you're going to read zero ohms. If it's the next, you know, the first read is open, and the second one is closed, you'll get 1K all the way up to N times 1K resistors. You read that resistance and now you know exactly where the float value is and you know um, the height of the liquid. Um, and here's just a diagram showing there's a, you know, there's a few different variations of this. One, I think it's slightly different spacing. Um, so depending on, you know, you're gonna pay a little bit more for more densely spaced because you need more read relays. Uh, read switches. Um, and then another nice thing about these is you can extend them, which I thought was kind of a cool hack. Uh, so if you go to the overhead, I'll show this off because this is, I think, good a good visual demo. Okay. Okay. So um, the way this PCB is made is it's like a thick PCB. It's like a two millimeter thick PCB. And you can see here it's grooved out a little bit. It's machined out so that all of these um, can, uh, let's see, I'll auto focus on all. I'll zoom in. Zoom, 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 zoom. Okay. So you see each uh, read is here and they're all connected to one common, you know, ground or high voltage, whatever. And then they're each individually connected to this chain of resistors. So it becomes like an R and R ladder, right? It's like as, you know, as the shorts, you can determine um, between the two contacts with the resistances. And then if you want, and then there's like one extra resistance, I guess. So it's not, if you, if it's, uh, at the very bottom, you'll read 1K, not zero, because there's one, one extra resistor. You can, um, these are symmetric, and so you can, you know, chain them, literally, even more. You can have another one on the other end here, and you just solder mechanically, and you maybe glue it, um, and then you can have, you know, as long as you want. This one is like, you know, about a, a foot. Um, you want 10 feet, you get 10 of these, you solder them together, and now it's 10 feet long, and you just, now you're measuring between, you know, this is maybe... Um, you know, 50 resistors this is up to zero to 50 K. And then if you have 10 of them, now it's 500 K all within reason uh, to be able to measure with um, an op amp or resistor divider. Okay. So a uh, constant current source. Uh, yeah. So go there. Okay. Sorry. That's the mechanical variations. And then this is how you can combine them. We just talked about that. You can extend them. So one of the nice things about, you know, th there's a lot of different ways to read, you know, a tank, a water tank, levels but one of the things that's kind of nice about this is you know you don't need any software you don't need any special you know so, um firmware configuration my controller it's a raw resistance in um and because it's not powered externally it's just a switch and you know the magnet is the is the thing that closes the switch you can pass very fairly high voltages through and you can pass you know some reasonable amount of current as well. So you could use this, like other than the resistor um, that's involved, you can use this with higher voltages if you desire. You don't have to use three to five volts. If you want to power this from, you know, 48 volts or 24 volts, you don't have to worry about doing any conversion. Um, and then you can use an op amp to just like, you know, get the voltage out and the resistance out and convert that to any, any voltage you desire. So depending on your con control circuitry, you may not need to have a microcontroller. You can have a fully solid state feedback loop um so i thought that was kind of neat and i'm sure there's a lot of situations where this might come in handy um you'll also need of course the float they do sell magnetic floats that um are covered in polypropylene and a couple other materials um you know one thing that they definitely say is if you have food safe or you know caustic materials this is going to work great you don't have to worry about caustic gases you don't have to worry about um the difficulty of um, sterilizing um, 
your sensors because um, it can be sterilized along with the you know the stainless steel or plastic vat that you're using um, because again it's fully mechanically and electrically isolated from everything um they also have a couple other thing you know you know while i was looking around um they sell smt relays which i thought was uh reeds i keep saying relay because i'm used to saying reed relay there they sell um smt reed switches uh that are stocked at digikey and they also have a kind of a cool little like um interactive cool. reed switch demo where you can like drag it around and you can like try different types and uh you like latching to type and shielded types and like there's a little magnet you can drag around and you can uh, determine how um the the read simulate you simulate the read switch on how it'll act so that is kind of neat as well all right available on digikey and you know in this post uh uh part shortage world uh when we show things the screen they're, so they're, i can't show you they're, yeah they're usually in stock they're not it's in stock so check it out a couple different configurations as well i thought it was neat oh and i wanted to mention one more thing um it's designed you know it's designed for float leveling but i thought another thing is i've had situations where i want to measure whether something has moved back and forth on a railing and like you could there's sensors you could use that are fairly complicated but you just want to measure like hey where is something on an x y or like an x position not just a z position um you the magnet could be the slider and you could detect where it is a potentiometer would break um you could use like uh a um it's a belt driven system with a rotary encoder but then you don't have absolute positioning um this could give you absolute positioning in in any orientation it does not have to be just z-axis okay and that is this week's IMPI. on mpi on mpi